Hello maths fans, Dr Tom Crawford here at the University of Oxford walking you through another admissions interview question. Suppose you are a company selling cat food. You need to sell it in tins with volume equal to one unit, but you want to use the smallest amount of metal possible to reduce your costs. The only restriction is that the tins must be cylindrical as this is the shape that can be manufactured most easily. The question is, what size tin should you use? Is it tall and thin? Is it short and fat? Or is it somewhere in between? To help me answer this question, I'm going to be using the Maple Calculator app. It's a great piece of software, completely free, and as we'll see, it's really helpful for working out derivatives as well as plotting graphs. Download it for yourself now and use it along with me in the video as we work our way through the solution. Our starting point is going to be to work out what we know. So we're given a very important piece of information in the question, the volume of the cylinder has to be equal to one. So if we consider a general cylinder, as shown here, and let's suppose it has height given by h, which of course is unknown at the moment. And let's suppose it has a radius given by R. Then the volume of this cylinder is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. And again, we know this is equal to one. Now the question wants us to minimize the material used to make the tin so here, that means the surface area, where we're going to assume it has zero thickness, or at least the same thickness regardless of the size of the tin, so ultimately it won't actually affect our answer. To calculate the surface area of a cylinder, imagine unraveling it to create a net. And what we're going to find is a circle on the top for this top face, we'll then have a large rectangle which rolls up to give the curved face and we'll have another circle on the bottom. So the area of this net is equal to the surface area of our cylinder. So therefore the surface area which I will label SA is going to be equal to pi r squared plus another pi r squared, so two pi r squared, and then plus the area of this rectangle. Now the height of the rectangle is given by h, because that's the height of the cylinder. But this length along the top, and of course the same on the bottom, we have to think a little more. Now when we roll this up to create our cylinder, this top edge here, is actually going to perfectly match with the edge of our top circle. So this length here, the width of our rectangle, has to be equal to the circumference of this top face, the circumference of our circle. So this, the rectangle width, is therefore equal to 2 pi times the radius, because that is the circumference of this circle. So for our surface area, we've got pi r squared from the top, pi r squared from the bottom, that's the two pi r squared, and then we add on the area of the rectangle, which is plus two pi r times the height h. So we have the formula of the quantity that we're trying to minimize, but at the moment, we have an unknown radius r and an unknown height h. So this function, let's call it f, it's a function of r and h, and it's given by 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And what we want to do is minimize f. Now at the moment it's a function of two variables. So we could try some kind of partial differentiation perhaps, differentiating with respect to r and h individually and trying to find a critical point. However, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have this 
very important piece of information. We know the volume here has to be equal to one. And we can use this to get an expression for H in terms of R. So if we do that, we can rearrange this equation to say that H is equal to one divided by pi R squared. So for a value of H equal to this, then the volume will always be one, and that is what we've said it must be fixed at. So now substituting this into our equation, we now get a function of R only. So we can say that F of R is equal to two pi times the radius squared, and then we've got two pi R multiplied by H, so that's plus two pi R divided by pi R squared. We can now simplify this expression a little, so the pi term will cancel, as will the R term on the top with one of them on the bottom. And so what we'll get is that our function of R, which remember is the surface area we want to minimize, is given by two pi R squared plus two divided by R. We're now at the point where we need to differentiate. If we find the derivative of this function and set it equal to zero, we know that this corresponds to a turning or stationary point. And hopefully this will be our minimum. So taking the derivative, we can say that df by dr is equal to four pi r, and then it's going to be minus two over r squared. Now I can actually check my working using the Maple Calculator app. I just open the app on my phone and then select the camera at the top and I can take a photo of the expression. So the equation has now appeared in my app and I can simply click on the differentiate with respect to R tab and it will show me the derivative. Unfortunately, I'm getting the same answer as the one I've calculated on the board. The app also shows a plot of the function, which is really helpful. We can see here the only turning point for R positive, which of course it has to be given it's a radius, is indeed a minimum as we had hoped. Setting the derivative equal to zero, we get four pi r has to be equal to two divided by r squared. And of course we can rearrange this to get r cubed is equal to one over two pi. And so our radius r has to be equal to one divided by two pi to the power of one third. So our radius is the cube root of one divided by two pi. Now we have the radius, we can substitute back into our equation for the volume up here to get h. So h is equal to one over pi and then one divided by r squared. So flipping this and squaring it gives us two pi to the two thirds. So two pi all to the power there of two thirds. So now we have a two thirds positive power of pi minus one negative power. So what we're gonna end up with here is h. And then if I square the two as well, so I've got four to the one third, that's actually going to give me h is four over pi all to the power of one third. Comparing these two values, we can see that to go from r to h, what we've done is multiply by eight inside the cube root. So what that means is actually that h is equal to eight to the one third times r, and of course the cube root of eight is two. So the height is equal to two times the radius. So in summary, for a cylindrical tin of a fixed volume of one unit, in order to minimize the surface area and therefore reduce production costs, we actually want the height of our tin to be equal to twice the radius. Now, twice the radius is of course 
equal to the diameter of our cylindrical tin. And so therefore, if these two are equal, the cylindrical tin is as square as possible in order to minimize production costs. Having conducted some extensive research in my local supermarket, it seems that most cat food tins fall into one of two categories. The tall one, similar to a tin of baked beans, and the shorter one, similar to a tin of tuna. For a typical baked bean style tin, the radius is 3.8 centimeters and the height 11 centimeters. So that's a little too tall. While for a typical tuna style tin, the radius is 4.3 centimeters, but the height is only 3.5 centimeters. So that's way too short. So for all the cat food manufacturers who are looking to reduce production costs and are watching this video, you're welcome. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do remember to subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you all soon. Take care.